Hey guys, Mr. Awesome RC Gade here, and welcome to another edition of the Squared Soaker Rants podcast. Oh, and there's one other thing. Happy New Year! Yeah, 2022. Oh, hopefully it's... A better year. I think we're all hoping that. That's not that's not something I'm just hoping for. There's a lot of crazy stuff going out there. It continues to go on. And a lot of crazy stuff continues to go on in the world of wrestling. What a fun time we're having. Uh, but yes, a new year. And um, I guess a new beginning. For all of wrestling, well, that's every year, really, and I think we all had our hopes high that uh, day one, which happened this Saturday, and I'm happy it happened this Saturday because I got to enjoy a few beers. <sighs> Just beer and wrestling go so good together. Anywho, it was fun. Um, well, the drink and the beer, the... <laughs> doing my real reviews over on Instagram. By the way, check that out. Uh, but the event itself was... Oh my God, I'm trying to think of a good word. It, it didn't... It didn't fully suck, but it wasn't the greatest. It wasn't what I was hoping for, you know. I mean, I... Should have known better with WWE making all these dumb decisions, um, where they're going, you know, with things or where they're going with the company. But I, I was really hoping that pay-per-view wise, or they called it a special, I actually just heard about this today. <laughs> they're not calling them pay-per-views anymore. They're, uh, something about special events or something like that. And I went, wait, what? I didn't even pick up on that apparently I was too busy either you know on the phone doing stuff or those beers really got to me um but it got a lot of but no sorry going back I, I, we were hoping or I was hoping this is a new beginning I mean this is literally day one literally and it I I really like that concept you know, start the year off day one. This is how it's going to go. And it went, eh. Like, it didn't feel like a big pay-per-view or even didn't feel like a special event. It felt, the whole event really just felt like another week of wrestling. You know, another Raw or another SmackDown. Like, um... I don't even know why they had King Corbin, or sorry, not King Corbin, Happy Corbin facing McIntyre again. I mean, that was what? Not not quite the middle, but in the middle of the event. And it just seemed like it didn't need to be there. This is something we could have waited till Friday, or even not at all, because I'm not a fan <laughs> of this <clears throat> whole feud or anything. <clears throat> Uh, but unfortunately, uh, behind the scenes, of course, it could be a work. And that's how wrestling should be. Is it real? Is it a work? Uh, McIntyre seems to be injured, which is not good. Uh, hopefully he has a speedy recovery. And the big news of the night, and it was sad, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that we weren't going to get Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns because, unfortunately... Roman Reigns has tested positive for COVID. I, well, just like anybody, I'm not going to just, I'm not just saying this because he's a big top wrestler. I see him every week. I'm, I am a fan of this Roman Reigns. Well, I've been a fan of the, I just really like what he's doing. But knowing what we know, what he's already battled, um, you know, he, he's got a bad immune <clears throat> or I forgot the term for it, but we all know. Um, so hopefully he makes a speedy recovery. Hopefully he doesn't have to go through the worst of it. Like a lot of us, well, a lot of people had 
I've been fortunate in that too, that I haven't had to have COVID and I'm trying to keep it that way. I'm trying to keep it away from my parents. <clears throat> and, you know, it, it's just a scary situation. So what, but the interesting thing that WWE did, instead of just giving Brock the night off, which here in a little bit, I'll explain why I wish they would have just done that anyway. Uh, they put him in a match. I'm like, okay, hey, they're paying him all this money, put in some of the work, and they made the WWE Fatal 4-Way for the championship into a Fatal 5-Way. <clears throat> and I'm like, <clears throat> you know, my thought was, well, he doesn't really deserve to be in it. Because he hasn't been a part of any storyline on Raw. But as long as he doesn't win it, it'll be fine. You know, he'll put more carnage in this already stacked match. <clears throat> um, so I was like, all right, hey, at least they're doing something with him. But the rest of the show just, like I said, felt like another just another run-of-the-mill pay-per-view or another show. I mean, we also had Cesaro and Ricochet, which I enjoy seeing that team. I don't want it to become a thing. You know, Cesaro's been in many tag teams. I mean, he does phenomenal. Of course he does. And Ricochet uh, is awesome. And the people they face, Sheamus, Ridge Holland, all amazing superstars. But, you know, and at least it was on the kickoff, but we didn't really need it. It wasn't, you know, I, I think it was just something to give the fans who were there for the kickoff. It was okay. Of course, poor, and I, I'm laughing, I know, but poor Ridge Holland. Guy can't catch a break. <laughs> well, sorry, that that was a bad turn. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> no, the guy's caught plenty of break. Uh, but for those who forget, uh, when he was in NXT, he had a very, very bad leg, leg break. Made it back, was in war game. Or no, he sorry, he missed war games because of the broken leg. But he came back. He is just a huge specimen. Like, I see him going far, especially in Vince's world. He should go far. Um but unfortunately, during this match, he got his nose broken and had to be taken out. And I feel bad for the guy, you know, or anyone. I mean, really anyone that goes through that many in injuries, you know, that's more time on the shelf. Uh, fortunately, a broken nose isn't going to keep him off for a while. I'm sure we'll see him on SmackDown. I'm sure we're going to probably get this match again because um, they just drag it on. Uh, but yeah, the old, aside from the main event, uh, well, actually, no, I'm going to say it. Match of the night was Edge and Miz. I mean, yeah, it had a lot of entertainment aspects, but both those guys know how to work. They know how to tell a story and they know how to do a wrestling match. And they did. They performed really well. Compared to the rest of the matches, this was number one. I loved it. And of course, we got the huge shocker. Beth Phoenix is back. I really had, I mean, we were all sad that she left NXT. Or at least I was. I know I'm not, actually, no, I know I'm not the only one. But we kind of understood because of the direction they're going. I'm wondering why she's in raw maybe just for this match and it looks like they're setting up for a mixed you know a mixed match match or i'm just fumbling my words i'm good at that if you follow this podcast you know how good i am with my words but anyway they're gonna set up a tag team match for our rumble and you know what i'm for it uh with the way things have been going in WWE, the certain mat, the repetitive matches, the way they book people, I'm okay with this. You know, it's going to be entertaining. Beth Phoenix is awesome. Maurice, I haven't seen her wrestle in quite a while, but I'm sure she can pull something off. I mean, 
her and her husband do great together, her and Miz. Uh, of course, Edge is always on fire, and uh, I've said it many times before, Miz doesn't really get the respect he deserves, you know, for being around as long as he has. <clears throat> but yeah, that, to me, that was the great, I, and I want, you know, I'd love to sit here and say, man, that Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch, they tore the house down. Sadly, it didn't really do much for me. Um, I love Liv Morgan. I love that they're pushing her. I wish she could get the title. Becky Lynch is, of course, always good. Now, I mean, I would have loved when she returned just to go back to the man thing, but you got to change, you know, and she was out for quite a while. And she's killing it as this, you know, weird, uh, funny heel, kind of like her husband. If, if you pay attention, you see they wear a lot of the same clothes. <laughs> like they're twinsies, but they have a little difference in character, but it's still that goofy over the top heel. And I, I do enjoy that with Seth, especially enjoying that with Kevin Owens, because you can tell he's being over the top and annoying on purpose. And it's actually one of the few things I still watch raw for is him <laughs> being that person. Um, but yeah, that match, uh, but back to the live, um, and Lynch match, it, it was okay. And it, it, the fans seemed to love it. And I, I enjoyed some spots, but it just seemed really uncoordinated. Like if, if you go back and watch it and I may go back and watch it, Hey, who knows? Maybe that's when the beer started really taking effect <laughs> or when I started drinking, because it wasn't until, like, I think a little over the halfway point is when I started cracking beers and doing my social media stuff. But no, it just, it was all right. I mean, we kind of knew that they weren't going to give Liv the title. I would have loved to seen Liv get it. But yeah, I mean, the show is just, eh. It was all right. It didn't have that, you know, big feel that I was hoping for. But on to... Oh, the main event. Okay. So we get this fatal five way carnage everywhere. I do enjoy that, you know, spot, 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 spot everywhere. It's all good. Uh, it was short for a fatal five way, but I guess you don't want to go too long in those things. I did note it like, uh, Lesnar was getting breaks, you know, he, he got, you know, speared here or speared into that and you go okay he's taking a break because he can't go as long as the other guys can and so i noticed that i'm like all right he's taking a break that's good at least it's not a one-on-one -on -one and it's over like that and he's capable of more like he did a great job at ground jewel i actually had to applaud him and goldberg where's this been you know um but no, instead of any one of the other four that have been there weekly, you know, built in the storyline, working towards something, oh, WWE had to, of course, just give Brock the title. And I know, well, actually, I didn't know. I wasn't really thinking about this until I was listening to uh, one James Cornett, you may have heard of him. Uh, when they brought up him and Brian last, they brought up that they're probably setting up for Brock having the WWE title, Reigns having Universal. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's what they're going for. I still don't like it. I It's stupid to me to give a part-timer, and that's what Brock is. Granted, he's done a little better this time around. I I am kind of a fan of this. Uh, the way he's been trying to be babyface. Like, he's still an ass, but, you know, he's that new beard, the man bun, the intimidation, the little stuff he did with Sami Zayn. I'm like, eh, that, at least he's doing that. That's cool. But I hate that we constantly have to give him the title. It, 
Especially, like I said earlier, he wasn't even a part of this match before. I mean, I know they had to make a quick decision and, you know, you got to make stuff, you know, stuff happens. You got to go off that and do what you can. But to, again, you know, give him the title to me is just ridiculous. To me, that says screw Big E, which who he did pin. Screw Bobby Lashley, screw Kevin Owen, screw Seth Rollins. Let's just go with this overpaid guy that comes in here and there. It, it just a slap in the face to those guys. And then, of course, what we saw on Raw is, and it's going to be a good match. I'll give them that, or it should be. Lashley versus Lesnar has never happened, or at least to my knowledge. If, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm not talking OVW, I'm talking WWE. Um, but yeah, I mean, it should be a good match, but I just hate that they keep... It's just lazy. It's like, oh, Lesnar's here. Well, he's probably going to get the title. Whereas, if we did get him, you know, Lesnar and Reigns again, there's been a build to this. There's reasoning for it, you know. And especially Paul Heyman has been building that feud. But, again, I mean, they, they had to do what they had to do. And they, they just shouldn't have done the title thing. But yeah, all in all, day one just was not what I was hoping for. I, I am excited, as always, for the Royal Rumble. Uh, already they have a big main event with Lesnar, Lashley. I wish Big E would have got another shot, but it is what it is. WWE is going to keep doing what they do. Uh, speaking of keep doing what they do and just giving titles out. Oh, what a rough night over on NXT. There was some good matches, but to have Roddy, well, I'm not too upset about this because Carmelo Hayes is a good wrestler but I am upset that Roddy had to drop the Cruiserweight title and that they're getting rid of the Cruiserweight title instead of they could have continued to do something with it rather than, well, nothing to do. Let's just get rid of it. Um, but the worst by far, uh, Braun Breaker is the new NXT champion. I... No, I... I think who said it? I was, as I was setting up here, I was watching Cultaholics. That's right. And they said, I think they counted. He's had 14 matches and he's already champion. And I'll, and I'll say this again. He's awesome. What a rookie, you know, he's, it's one of those, he's green, but he's not green. He gets it. And that's great. I mean, I could see him in the future, being you know getting big championships but now he's barely been in the <clears throat> barely been in the business i don't care how good you are that you know what does that say oh don't worry about paying your dues guys just get right in there and you know i'm trying to i know someone already argued with me on it saying well what you don't want the new guys to get a shot you just want the old guard to be around? Well, of course not. Yeah, I, I'm i all for creating new superstars, new faces, but when you're skyrocketing it that quickly, that's ridiculous. But again, I guess that should be the title for this episode. It is what it is, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. He's our champion. Although a little funny note on that one, I noticed uh, the next day, well, actually, this was even before I watched NXT because I usually, most of the time I watch it the day after because I set it to record and I can fast forward. And of course, I got the spoiler and I went, well, this match, you know, it was a good match. He did a good job. Champa, of course, did a wonderful job. I had to watch it, but no, I got the spoiler and I'm like, oh my God why uh but cool little thing is uh rick steiner was there and they showed it on dot com and i'm like oh that's yeah that's a good moment for him 
His dad comes out, hugs him. But then I thought, well, wait. They're trying to erase the whole fact that he is a Steiner. Yet they're like, oh, hey, Rick Steiner's here to congratulate his son. Then why the hell is he Braun Breaker? I mean, we know who that is. <laughs> but I won't go on a full rant on that one. Uh, but yeah, I just, I'm, and I should, I guess I should stop complaining because WWE is just going to keep going with this. I mean, we've talked about it. They're doing the really stupid next in line thing. You know, people who aren't even wrestlers. Oh, we'll, we'll train them. Yeah. And then they'll skyrocket them. And I don't, I just get re I get really kind of sad when all oh, raws on. I'm like, okay. And this is literally raws on. I'll just, all right. Yeah. But yeah, so that's, <laughs> I don't really get excited. I mean, there's moments, there are superstars. I want to support. I want to watch. But the direction WWE is going is just, nah. Like, I don't want to give up on it. I grew, and it's not just because I grew up watching WWE, but, you know, what are they pushing out all these people? Like, they, it's obvious they don't want professional wrestling. I mean, well, many could argue they stopped doing professional wrestling years ago. But it just seems more and more Kevin Dunn is getting his way. You know, the fame, I'm sure we've all read it, heard it, where he said, we're not a wrestling show, we're a show that has wrestling in it, which is freaking stupid. Um, but that's just one man's opinion. That's just my opinion. But yeah, it just seems like more and more he's getting what he wants. And it shows. Like, all right, this isn't really Vince's show anymore. This Well, this is Vince's show, but the Kevin Dunn show. Oh, man, I should have done that. This is the Kevin Dunn show. <laughs> if anyone can make a video of that, post it on the Squared Soaker Rants uh, Facebook page. <laughs> That'd be funny. Get his little buck teeth there. All right, so enough of me... Bitching and moaning about day one and Braun Breaker and NXT, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's go through these wonderful headlines. Uh, most all of which I have shared like uh, to the Squared Soaker Rants Facebook page. Uh, first up, let's talk about one Scotty Too Hottie, which I am very happy to read that he is back in the ring. Like I... I don't know if he already did the show, but there's one indie booking that he made and he's doing more. Uh, but in a recent interview, he talked about why he left WWE or uh, more so, uh, you know, saying he wasn't really having fun anymore. And this comes from WrestleZone. Sorry, these accept accept cookies. Yeah, go screw yourself. Uh, yeah, this comes from WrestleZone. Scotty Too Hottie explains his decision to leave WWE and what motivated his in-ring return. Uh, he goes on to say, What a crazy time in my life. It's like I'm taking this crazy step and a lot of people are like, Oh, this guy. And I'm 48 years old. I'm going back into the ring. But if I didn't feel like I could deliver, I wouldn't do it. I just felt like the perfect time to do it. And man, I want to see it. I wouldn't mind seeing Scotty Too Hotty back. It was, you know, it's always interesting. These wrestlers you really enjoyed in the past. And, you know, you hear that they're coaches or they're behind the scenes. And you think, oh, are they retired? Are they injured? Well, no, some of them are good to go, but they just want to do what they want to do and essentially this article or the interview he did he uh who did he do the interview with uh, oh insight with chris van vliet which you can 
see on YouTube. Y'all know, should know, or do know who that guy is. Um, but essentially, Scotty Tuhati said he left due to um, just not, I mean, more, I mean, not just not having fun anymore, but, and I kind of agree with him on this, you know, he would coach all these people and you, you know, you build relationships, you know, how you, you know, far beyond how you just, how you doing. Oh, great. No, you're, Oh, let's work on this. Oh, are you okay? You know, and the like, um, and then him getting the news that these people were let go even before they got the news. And he said, it just got to him and that would me too. You know, well, if, if I was in that career that I loved, a lot of people came and went when I worked for Walmart, I eventually left. I didn't give a shit, <laughs> but no, here <clears throat> I do miss some people I used to work with. So, I, but I do understand that, you know, it gets disheartening. Like, well, what am I doing here? They're just going to let me go next. And so he decided, Hey, let's get back in the ring. He said he still feels good. And I'd love to see it. I mean, he's one of those guys you definitely get a, would get a huge pop. Um, and actually speaking of, you know, all these people being let go, we have more releases. Oh, it's a, a new year WWE. So, you know, new people to leave. But yes, yeah, sadly, we are losing a lot of good people and all on NXT side. So I guess the only upside is they ha only have to wait 30 days. I know it's still sad. Uh, but we have Hideki Suzuki. I very much apologize if I got that wrong. Uh, he, if you remember, he was a part of the diamond mine as I'm not even going to try to say that one. But yeah. He was a part of the diamond mine, never wrestled. So I never got it. Um, but we also lost Scott Armstrong, who's been a long time. I think he got, he's refereed. He's been an age. I, well, I don't know the full list of what he's done there. Uh, Alice in Danger, George Carroll, Sarah Cummins, uh, Danny Burch, which that really bums me out. What a performer. Actually, what a professional wrestler. And I want more of that. Um, you know, just more sad news. Uh, Ace Steel, Ryan Katz, Dave, I don't know, Dave. Oh, Dave Po uh, essentially Rajin Singh was his name. He was a manager for the great Kali for a brief period or not brief period. He was for quite a while. Sorry about that. Uh, but we also are losing Timothy Thatcher, which that's a damn shame. Another great professional wrestler road dog, Jesse James. So now they're even getting rid of triple H's people. Road Dog's gone. Well, I doubt they would ever get rid of Michaels unless Sean just truly didn't want to be a part of the company anymore. Uh, but one of the biggest names on here is, of course, William Regal, which that just angers me and makes me sad. I mean, Regal, I'm sure, did a lot behind the scenes. Like, I think he recruited quite a bit of people, uh, but he was a great general manager for NXT. Um, I think what well, before him, it was JBL and I, that's when I just started watching NXT, but William Regal fit better. Like, of course, really sad that we didn't get the war games, you know, from William Regal this year, but you know, I wonder where he would go or if he's, just done with wrestling. Uh, I know I'd love to see Birch or Thatcher back in the ring somewhere. I can see Impact would be a good... Well, no. 
Well, sorry. I was trying to avoid saying AEW, uh, which uh, Doug Debonair Douglas shared this funny meme uh, when he heard about, or and this was after he essentially saw what happened in NXT. It's, you know, Homer looking weird and it says, well, Doug says, been seeing this shit all night. But it says Strong and Champ are AEW bound, which I try to avoid saying that. You know, when people are released or people are screwed over, which, it, you know, it's so easy to say, go to AEW when they're so disorganized as is and they have so many freaking people there and they need to start getting rid of some. And I, I know that's bad to say when, you know, we I get upset over. WWE releases and I'm not suggesting that they fire people quite like WWE has, but you got to start weeding out some people. I'm not going to say names of who they need to get rid of, but I'm sure you have some ideas as well (laughs) of who doesn't need to be a part of that anymore. Um, Oh, speaking of which one of their few, people that left was a was a was big swall who at the time i think this was back in november i don't have the article here i thought i saved it but she said it was a mutual parting her contract expired and she you know they both said okay thank you for the opportunity see you later however Now she's claiming that the reason she left was due to a lack of diversity. Out of all the bad things I can say about AEW, and I'm sure you can, the lack of diversity ain't one of them. They, they're good on that end. They're very disorganized, but no, diversity is fine. (laughs) That's... Uh, but Tony Khan, of course, had to tweet something about it. And I don't know. I don't think he should have, re- you know, pointing out all the people. And he should have just let it go. Kind of just moved on. But it was funny to go. Um, two of the EVPs are brown. We've had, you know, these wrestlers win over the last month. I mean, it was funny, but yeah, something you don't just come out. We're not racist. We have a to calm, 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 calm. (laughs) I mean, it would have been worse. I think if it came from like Omega, like, what are you talking about? We ain't racist. (laughs) You know, like, Oh, white guy talking about diversity. I know how weird that can be. So I'm not going to go into too much about that. of whether it's diverse or not, but no, they're, they're good on that. end. it's mostly just getting rid of the people they need to get rid of. And I can understand why they let her contract expire. Actually, Tony Khan, he also added in that, that he let it expire because, and he, I guess that was kind of a little, you know, a little stab at her was, uh, Cause she wasn't that good in the ring. And I, I can't argue that she had a good look. She, she was good or okay, but yeah, I, nothing really special. So yeah, I can see why he would have went, okay, have a good one. But you know, it started out as a, you know, Oh, it's amicable. We respect each other two months later, essentially saying, no, it's, you know, it's racism. That's why. And I'm like, eh, come on. You could have just left alone, moved on, went to another place or got better at your craft. But what do I know? I'm just a guy sitting in his room slash bar slash workout room slash game. Anyway, (laughs) I know I'm just. I'm just the dude who talks about wrestling. I obviously, I don't know how to wrestle. I've never wrestled. Well, back in middle school, but that's a different type of wrestling. 
uh, my old coach. I love that guy. My old coach, uh, Mr. Olson, he would tell us uh, as he was, you know, training us, you know, I don't want to see any of that stupid WWF crap. I'm like, hey, I like WWF. And now I'm like, no, I get it. He didn't want us, you know, jumping all over, jumping off the walls again. Uh, and actually continuing on this release train, per perched on the top rope, where I shared this from, it appears Matt Stryker is no longer with Impact Wrestling. Stryker tweeted and deleted. I love how, before I go on, I love how that's a thing now. I mean, we all do it. I've had many a tweets that I woke up a little hungover. Actually, I don't really get them, but you know what I mean. You, you said something, you went, oh shit. So, but I, you get that a lot, especially in wrestling. They tweeted and then deleted it, but too late. It's already out there. Uh, but Stryker tweeted and deleted, stating, I am disappointed that my time with Impact Wrestling on Access TV is done. I really enjoyed the locker room. Thanks for allowing me to tell your story. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. And, yeah, that's that's sad. Like, Stryker... I would have loved to seen him wrestle more. I didn't really get to see, well, or not that I can remember. My memory is out there. Um, but I thought he was good uh, in impact, at least on the microphone. You know, he knew his stuff. And I believe he also, if I'm not mistaken, he does the English commentary for one of the indie or one of the things in Mexico. We all know how fun that place is right now. Uh, yeah, so... <clears throat> you know, to, we're so used to seeing releases from WWE. It's weird when we see... You know, a release from any of the other companies. But, you know, sometimes you need... I, I'm sure we'll get more info of... Why? You know that he left. Maybe it was just time. Who knows? Um, I'm sure we'll get more stories later. Uh, but actually speaking of access, this was shared that a new Japan pro wrestling will be back on access TV. And I'm, I'm excited for that. It's been a while since I, wa I know when it was on, I took a break from it because it, as good as the wrestlers are there, it it just seemed like the same old, same old. Like even you'd have two matches look about the same of how, you know, they either perform the match, how it was booked. I don't know. I just kind of, kind of with Ring of Honor, as much as I love them, just kind of teetered away from it. But, you know, maybe they have a new look. Um, I'd love to see if Strong would make it to Axis so I can keep up on that. Uh, but, yeah, to have New Japan back. It's going to be interesting to have Impact and New Japan. But, hey, uh, one network having two wrestling shows? That ain't a bad deal. Well, actually, I was about to sign off here. This was just an interesting... Headline, this comes from Mandatory. Uh, it's for WrestleFest. What number? Six? No, 26. So it's been around a while. Um, Saturday, January 22nd. We will have Eric Redbeard and Adam Shear, which that makes a little sense. They were in the Wyatt family together. That's, for those that don't know, Eric Rowan... And Braun Strowman. But the team they're facing is a very, very weird pairing. Bully Ray and Enzo. Uh, huh? Uh, but I'm sure that's... I mean, that tag match... I mean, the names alone are going to sell the tickets. But the pairing, I think, is really going to sell more. Like, I kind of want to see that. 
you know, there's Enzo getting back in the ring. I'm not saying he was the best worker. There's many a stories <laughs> that he's not. But he's a good entertainer. He's good on the microphone. And I haven't seen Bully Ray in a minute. When's the last time? Oh. Yeah, I think the last time I saw him wrestle was live. Yeah. When Ring of Honor for the first time and hopefully not last, uh, they were here in Portland. So yeah, that that alone would be interesting to see. Uh, but yes, let's go ahead and end this uh, little podcast. Hope you enjoyed the headlines, my thoughts. Hope this is entertaining to you. I try. I really do. Uh, but tell me what you think. Did Am I just flat out wrong? Am I flat out right? Uh, is Has there been any worst booking in the past and there has been now? What do you think of everything that's been going on that I've talked about in this podcast? Let me know in the comments below, please. Like, share, and subscribe. That really helps me out. Join us over on Facebook on the Squared Soaker Rants Facebook page. Also, go over to Instagram where I... On Squared Soaker Rants on... I should have just said it that way. I'm really good at this, aren't I? Uh, Squared Soaker Rants over on Instagram where, typically for special events or pay-per-views, I do real reviews where I just shoot out you know, one minute reels or le or less about what I'm wa reacting to what I'm watching. Um, actually been thinking about doing that here. And I had an idea with actually goes along the lines of terrible booking. I want to ask you and let me know in the comments below or and or I should say over on Facebook, what to you is the worst match ever? Either share a video or let me know where I can go find it. And here on the podcast, I will react to it. I'll try to get it up on the monitor of what you're watching. But hey, we're working at it, right? We're getting there. Hey! God, I hate that freaking wrestler. Uh, but anyway... Thank you for watching another episode of Squared Circle Rants here on YouTube. I, as always, is Mr. Awesome, R.C. Gade, and thank you for marking out with us. Squared Circle Rants. Mark out with us! <laughs>